This steel is 1 8 inch thick and a half inch wide. I prototypes out of cardboard to see which size felt the most ergonomic. Here's where I am so far. It was kind of hard to cut them so they're identical, but I think I got the process down where my cuts are more precise. Here's what we do first. First, I marked a cut on the steel at 5 and 3 quarters inches, and then 1 and a half inches from each end, I drew diagonal lines. Next, I clamped the steel down on the corner of a work surface. To prevent the hacksaw from dancing on the blade, scratch in where you want to start the cut. Then oil out the steel and start cutting. I use a hacksaw blade meant for thick metal. This one has 18 teeth per inch. I also made sure to only put pressure on the forward strokes and periodically oil the area to prevent the metal from getting too hot. My first cuts took over 10 minutes each to complete. It took a while for me to figure out the best place to clamp it, but by the end, it took me under four minutes to complete one cut. Next, I need to smooth out those sharp edges. Here's how I did it. Using my double cut flat bastard file, I'm just gonna do 20 strokes this way. One. Oh, I forgot to use the chalk. To prevent metal chips from accumulating on the file, I'm just gonna chalk up the file. So we are at four strokes, now we're at five. 20. Brushing off the file. Just the tip, and I'm gonna do 15 strokes. Brush it off, dodge it up. Somewhere between 45 and 90, I'm gonna try to get this edge right here to be a little bit rounded. This will be 10 strokes. One, and 10. The very tip is kind of burry and a, a little bit too pointy. I'm just gonna get the tip a little bit. One, two, three. Flip it over to do the other side. To so get rid of those deep scratches, I'm gonna use my single cut mill bastard file, and I'm gonna just do 10 strokes. Nine, 10, same thing here. One, 10, one, 10. Nice and smooth. Flip it over so we can finish off the other side. Here is how it looks like before filing, and here is how it looks like after filing. Key to the filing is to get rid of the burrs, but also to get that tip to be nice and pointy so it could stick into the target better. Here's a close up of the filing in addition to a diagram to show the angle of the file and the number of strokes I used. The last thing I like to do is make sure I've wiped away any metal shavings and then feeling with my finger any rough spots and just freehand get rid of those rough spots with the mill bastard until I can't feel them anymore. Before drilling the hole, mark the center point of each blade. If you're like me, your blades are going to come out different sizes, so make sure to measure each one before marking the center point. I then clamp down the blade. Make sure to use two clamps because if it breaks free of one clamp and spins towards you, that would not be good. To prevent the drill from dancing on top of the metal, use a hammer and awl to make a tiny divot for the drill bit. I then drilled a pilot hole. The drill bit I'm using is 3 seconds inch in diameter. To keep the area from getting too hot, make sure to go slow and oil it up when it looks dry. Follow up that hole by using a larger drill bit. I'm using a 1 8 inch drill bit, which is about the right size for my bolts, but it is a real snug fit, so I made sure to flip it over, drill the other side as well, and do kind of that round motion to make it just slightly larger. One hole is done and it's not centered, I could tell. Oh well, it's okay. Here are all the fasteners that you need. First off, determine where you want this wing nut. I like the idea that when I'm holding it, the wing nut is on this side of my hand rather than on this side. So my screw is gonna go in this side. I have these rubber washers. It's good to have a rubber washer because it adds friction to these two blades so they're not moving around as easily. So I put a rubber washer right in between the blades. And then I'm gonna put this inside the vise. Take a 632 by one half pan Phillips bolt. I want to take a quick break here to say that the fasteners I bought do not work. <gasps> I lost one already? Darn. This is the second set of fasteners mm. I lost while throwing these and I decided I needed longer bolts. On the left is a half inch bolt and on the right is a 3 4 inch bolt. Now I have a lot more space for the wing nut to get loose before flying off into the grass. 
Here I'm using a number six washer and a split lock washer to prevent the wing nut from falling off, but these aren't beefy enough to withstand the impact of a shuriken throw. Later on, I'd like to try nylon lock nuts or simply a hex jam nut under the wing nut. In addition, these tooth lock washers are a step up from the split lock washer, so I might try that too. Okay, back to the video. And then screw it in. That's how it looks like right now. And then on this side, we're gonna add a flat washer and then a number six lock washer on top of that flat washer. There you go. The Weathermax brand wing nuts versus just these normal zinc wing nuts were really big, so I chose these ones because they're just smaller. And screw it in. And there it is. Folding shuriken for about 20-ish dollars in materials. Four to five hours of manual labor you get for folding shuriken. And it doesn't take up a lot of space once they're folded up. I've thrown all four shuriken for the past two days. My first day was actually with my daughter. It will be the last video in this series. Yeah! <laughs> the one annoying thing about these shuriken is that they can sink too deeply into the target. Instead of cutting a diagonal line at one and one half inches from the end, maybe one or one and a quarter inches from the end would have been better. And since the metal is a little soft, the really pointy tips would bend. It's an easy fix though with a hammer and metal plate. Speaking of tools, after I lost a wing nut on my first day of throwing, I decided to have a screwdriver on hand to tighten the bolts. This could be an unnecessary step if you use better fasteners and a longer bolt. In any case, I think it's better to use a three quarter inch bolt over the one half inch bolt. Overall, the constant hand tightening of the wing nuts, maintenance, unfolding the shuriken didn't bother me. What bothered me was the time it took to remove some of the shuriken from the target. I guess it's not a bad problem to have. Better that than no sticks. Oh, there we go. With that minor gripe aside, these were so much fun. Here are some clips of me messing around. So far I'm really enjoying these, these are so much fun to throw. The downside is you might lose a fastener. So far these are awesome, I love them! <laughs> and time to go pick up my daughter! I realize that time to go pick up my daughter sounds like a funny way to end a video. <laughs> but let's just try one more ending, three at the same time! Yeah! Ah, 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 ah. Yay! And this is what I got. They're about $50 for three, but when we threw them, they weren't very successful. Nice. 